Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, I'm gonna show you the exact step-by-step -step plan I'm gonna follow to make one crore in the next six months. That's right, I'm gonna make one crores in revenue in the next six months. Now, before we get started with that, I just want you to know when you look at my portfolio, when you look at a huge portfolio like this, for example, right now, the portfolio value is already more than three crores, you should not be asking yourself about investing. You should not be asking the question, which funds have these people invested in? You should not be asking the question of, what these people do in the stock market to make the money. What you have to think of is how much of this money have they actually invested and how much has the market given them back? Because you realize that in most cases, most of the money was the money that they gave to the market and not the money that the market gave them back. So let's illustrate with an example, my own example of what I mean, right? So in this case, if you see out of the 3.10 CR, whatever that total amount is, it doesn't matter if it's three crores or three lakhs. What's important is that most of that money is something that I've invested into the market. Now, of course, I've got back 75 lakhs from the market and a lot of people look at this number and they're like, okay, I've not even invested that much and you've just made that much from the market. That's cool. But the important thing is, as you invest more, you're obviously going to get much bigger numbers and the market is going to work for you much better when you have more money. And I've illustrated this point in great detail in the video of why net worth explodes after one crore, right? So what happens is when your investment amount is high, you're making much more return from the market. So every year, you're probably making more money than what you could actively earn from your income. But what I do is I keep increasing my income to match those standards so that I can keep investing more money in the market, right? So that brings me to the topic of today's video, which is how I will make one crore in the next six months. Now, this is a blueprint that I'm going to follow in the next six months, and I'll keep you updated on the progress. You can verify the blueprint alongside me to see it in action. All right, so let's get started. So this is my plan. All right. First thing is the mindset. You have to understand how to think about making one crore in the next six months. Remember that the six months is my number. Like I said, the first crore is the hardest. I've made my first few crores. Now I know how to make money. The three crores that I've in my portfolio is just the money that I've invested in equity. But there's a lot more money that I've made. When you look at revenue, I've made more than a million dollars. And all of that money that I've made in revenue has given me the tools, the process, and the mindset that I can make the next few crores very fast and very simply, right? Because I know the process I have skills and I can deploy them to generate income. So how will I do this? The first thing is the mindset. The mindset, the core mindset is thinking about how can I create value which is worth 10 crores for other businesses in the next six months, right? So instead of thinking how I can make one crore, what I'm thinking is I'm going to help businesses and I'm going to help them worth 10 crores in the next six months because if I can generate 10 crores for other businesses, they wouldn't really mind paying me one crore. That's how I think about this, right? And this is how I've made every crore. For every crore that I've made, I've created value worth 10 crores for other businesses, right? And that's how the world works. You basically exchange value and money. And how do you bring value to the table? By having some skills that you can offer to solve problems, right? So that's the core mindset. 10x what you want to make and that's the amount of value that you want to add to the other businesses or to the other people if you're a product, if you're an end consumer product, for example, right? So how do you create value? By using skills to solve business problems. Now, I say solve business problems because I focus on helping businesses. But for example, if it's an e-commerce brand, if it's a product business, then they could also be focusing on end consumers. So they might be saying, how can I use products to solve customer problems? But in my case, it's a services business, so I say, how can I use my skills to solve business problems, right? So that's the main question I'm answering now. For the sake of this video, since this is about me, I'm gonna be focusing on my skills, but you could replace this, just plug any skill that you have. You could be doing video editing, uh, you know, tech, development, software, content, copy, design, anything. For me, it's marketing, it's digital marketing, and further, it specializes into growth marketing, performance marketing, and email marketing, right? So those are my key skills that I'm focusing on. So the revenue streams from these skills will become growth marketing consulting. So I provide consulting to different brands as a growth marketeer, or in some cases as a fractional CMO as well, 
which is a more involved role. Then I have my performance marketing team. So we provide performance marketing services and I actually have a performance marketing manager who takes care of that team. He's an expert in performance marketing. Then I have an email marketing team. We provide email marketing services. And I have a person who's responsible for that team, right? So those are the three revenue streams that are going to become uh, based on those revenue streams, we keep, have to decide the revenue split. So you can do exactly the same process. You might just be starting out with one skill and that's completely fine. Maybe you have a friend as a partner in the business who has another skill. So to give you an example, maybe you're a video editor and you know someone who's a graphic designer. Now you can offer not just graphic design as a service, not just video editing as a service, but also YouTube management as a service because you have the two key skills that are needed. And then you will need someone to go in and schedule and write descriptions. And a lot of that thing can be done with AI. Like imagine with my channel, I've gone from zero to 7,000 subscribers just with, you know, basic Loom video recordings and, uh, you know, some descriptions. But I've, I have a freelancer who helps me, you know, move all of the pieces around, right? So generating the descriptions, scheduling the videos. I focus on making the content and replying to your comments, which is where I feel most of the value that you get from the channel is, right? So split that one crore. So we have 20%, which I'm gonna be targeting from growth marketing consulting, that's around 20 lakhs in revenue, uh, 40% from performance marketing services, 40% from email marketing services, right? Now the, the consulting, the profit margin there is gonna be like 80% because that's basically my time that I'm gonna be giving to clients. When it comes to performance marketing and email marketing, we would have teams who will be executing. So I think the profit margin there could be around 40%, right? So 40 to 50% is sort of a decent agency profit margin. And on top of that, you do have to pay taxes. So I would assume that out of these 40, I would be left with around 15 lakhs each, right? So that's how I'm gonna be making this revenue. And with the consulting, it's gonna be probably like 80%. The only reason I don't wanna to target too much for consulting because it takes my time and I do love my freedom, right? So I've spoken about this in multiple videos that freedom is the most important thing I'm chasing. It's not the goal, but I will reach my financial goals as well. But my focus is on freedom. If I let go of my freedom, maybe I can get to a bigger financial goal. Maybe I can accelerate my journey to the financial goals. But I don't want to be in that category where you are working super hard in order to have some sort of early retirement promise someday and then enjoy life, I like to enjoy life on a day-to-day -day basis. And to do that, I have a rule, a very simple rule, which is the 555 rule. So I spend five hours at work, five hours with my family, and five hours on my health and wellness, right? So that's how I split my day in order to achieve freedom and enjoy life on a day-to-day -day basis and not have to wait for the enjoyment, delay that process, right? Now, what kind of clients do we need? So for growth marketing consulting, we basically just need two clients who can pay us 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1 those kinds of retainers a month. For performance marketing, we need seven clients at a lakh a month. And for email marketing, it's exactly the same, seven clients and a lakh a month. Now, there is a three-person team who can easily deliver seven, you know, six to seven clients. That's pretty easy to do with a lot of tools, with a lot of automations, with a lot of skills and frameworks that we've already developed in the agency, this is much easier for us, right? So like I said, you don't have to do the exact goals. I'm just sharing my process. I'm just sharing what I would do. You could have your one crore goal in three years. I think that's a pretty decent time frame to make one crores. You could have a 10 lakh goals in the next six months. That's a pretty decent time frame to achieve a 10 lakh goal if you're starting out, right? So then the next thing you do is you have to split it by the number of clients that you would need to get to that goal. The reason you wanna do this is because you wanna make sure that you are able to handle that number of clients. Like I know that I can handle two clients for growth marketing consulting. I can actually handle three to four clients if I am able to work more than five hours a day. But right now I'm not willing to sacrifice more than five hours a day to work. Even though I enjoy work, I think my family and my health should get equal attention. So that's the reason why I limit it to five hours in which I can handle two clients, right? So. I already have recently closed one client for growth marketing consulting at a similar price range and I have to close one more, right? Which I'm in conversation with right now. For performance marketing, we have three clients. We need four more. For email marketing, it's pretty much similar to performance marketing. So 
we are constantly doing sales, which I will cover in this video. So we already keep start getting clients, right? So that brings me to the question, how do you find clients, right? So the typical methods, the old school methods don't work anymore. And I'm also in fact going to tell you that you don't need a very cool looking website. You don't need to be making social media content regularly. You know, I think that's one thing that people hear a lot. That if you are an agency owner, and I think a lot of people like Gary Vaynerchuk and all have spoiled us to believe that you always need to be making content. Well, initially you don't, right? If you make content consistently, you get certain benefits of organic reach. That's a separate thing. But if you're just starting out and you're saying, I want to make a lakh a month just from side hustle income, from freelancing, you really don't need any social media content. I'll be very honest with you, right? Um, you don't need landing pages. You don't need to run ads. You don't, don't need to invest money. All you need is you need to find businesses that have these problems and then you need to reach out to them talking about how you can solve those problems. That could be an email, that could be a video audit, that could be a Loom video like this one. You know, Loom is one thing that I've used so much and I have closed clients without them even looking at my LinkedIn profile. My LinkedIn profile is super strong. I focus on creating content on LinkedIn, but I've had multiple clients that I've closed without looking at my LinkedIn profile. So I'm quite sure that if you're starting out, you really don't need all of this. So what do you really need? All right, this is the entire process that you need. So this is the blueprint right here. The first step is you need to find a niche. And this is important because you can't be solving hundreds of business problems for hundreds of clients. Let's say you're a freelancer, you want to focus on a niche because when you focus on a niche, it's much easier to get other clients in that niche. And it's much easier to build a case study in the niche, right? So without any fluff, I'm just going to give you like eight niches that you can start with. And you don't even have to start with eight, like just pick one. So you have accounting, you have legal, you have medical, you have healthcare, you have real estate, automobile, home services, e-commerce. All of these are seven figure niches. When I say seven figure niches is that, what it means is they are high profitable niches. So when you go to these niches, they will be making enough revenue that they would be able to give you the kind of retainers that you need. So for example, I mentioned a lack a month. So if I'm starting at a lack a month, I'm not going to go at the local bakery shop and say, do you need, um, you know, do you need promotion digital marketing services? Because I know they may not be even making one lack a month in profits. So these are the kinds of businesses that I would look at and especially in the international market. So that's the second thing, right? So one high profit niche and in the international market, that's going to be the best combination because there's something that you can leverage, which is the currency arbitrage, right? So when you work with a client, let's say in the UK, in the US, in Canada, in Australia, in New Zealand, in any of these countries, and you are doing the work sitting in Asia, for example, then you have the currency arbitrage. So you want to get your clients from stronger currency countries and then outsource the work or do the work in low cost of living areas or you know low income areas, essentially, because that's when you get the real arbitrage of currency, right? Once you've found that niche and your market, then you have to draft an offer. Now, it's a very simple formula to draft an offer. You have to solve one problem for one client persona using one channel, right? So for the email marketing, we are looking at e-commerce clients and our client persona is e-commerce D2C brands. And the problems we are solving, problem we are solving is to increase the repeat customers. So increase the percentage of revenue that comes from repeat customers. And the channel that we use for that is email, right? So that's the offer of our email marketing service. We further make the offer result oriented by telling them that we will drive 30% of the revenue that comes to you through email marketing, right? So that's the key result. So it's very important to focus on the key result. So there are three things when you provide services. There's inputs, there's outputs, and there's outcome. Actually, in any work, there are these three pillars, right? So inputs is all the things that you need to do the work. Output is, okay, this is what I've done. Maybe I wrote a blog post as an output. I made a YouTube video as an output, but that's not an outcome. An outcome can be, an output can be, I sent an email campaign, but an outcome can be so many people clicked on the email campaign and out of that, so many people placed an order from the website. So you see how we drove the revenue for the client first. So it's important to focus on the result for the client. One thing that I have seen less and less being talked about on YouTube is when people talk about making money, they often talk about what they want, how much money they want to make. What you have to flip this and think about what you can do for others in order to then make this money for yourself, right? Because when you achieve 
that certain key result for others, you will by default make money as a result of achieving that result. So why not focus on the results so that you can really deliver high quality work and in exchange you get the money, right? So what do you do next once you've figured this out? You know exactly what result you can drive for the client. Now you're looking at setting up an outreach system. So you remember how I said you don't need to make social media content and all of that? Well, all of that is inbound. What we are going to do is outbound, okay? So what we will do is we will pick outbound channels. Now, my favorite outreach channels are email, cold outreach. So I don't know the person I'm sending an email to. Then we have email, warm outreach. I have done some sort of research about this person. You know, maybe they are a friend of a friend. Maybe they're in my network. Maybe I just came across the website. Maybe I'm a customer. Maybe I was buying a product from a store and I decided their email marketing isn't great. Maybe I should reach out to them. Or it could be LinkedIn, which is usually a warm outreach. I'm either connected to them. Of course, I have a good network on LinkedIn, so I'm connected to quite a few people. Maybe they showed up on my newsfeed and I decided to send them a message. So those are my three outreach channels, right? And essentially what I'm doing on these channels this is where the execution comes. All I'm doing is I'm making sure that there are enough emails I'm sending on a daily basis and enough messages I'm sending to relevant businesses that I can help. And that's about it. You don't need a fancy systems to start off with. You can just do it manually. But the scale at which we are operating, we are sending thousands of emails a day. So we do have an automated system in place where we generate leads. We put those leads into, uh, leads into a specialized tool, a software that allows us to send multiple emails from different domains, different campaigns, A-B test those campaigns, see which one is getting the best response rates, and then take them to the sales process, right? So I teach the entire cold email outreach system that I use on my masterclass at GrowthGrad. So you can check that out at growthgrad.in where you'll be able to find the masterclass as well. So I have this masterclass uh, keep hap keeps happening once a month. It's a live masterclass. So when you join the masterclass, you'll actually be learning from me um, and asking questions live. So that's what we use at scale. But if you're just starting, starting out, you don't even need to go for the masterclass. All you need is to start manually finding businesses that you could help and start an outreach. I have a friend, for example, who looks at Google Maps and looks at businesses he can help on Google Maps with review automation. So he does an email automation where every customer that goes through that business journey will get an email to leave a review on Google Maps. And that's how he sets it up and collects the reviews. He has built now a tool to do this. And just with that, he's billing clients pretty good every month. So one problem that he's solving is not enough customers writing Google reviews. One channel he's solving on is Google Maps. The, the tool that he's using is email. The only client persona he's solving this for is medical hospitals and clinics. So that's his offer, right? So what's your offer? That's what you have to think about. So once you know your outreach channels, you know what to tell them because you understand what your offer is and you understand your audience. Then you have to take them through the sales process. So what's your sales process? What does it look like? So typically it's gonna be someone responds to your outreach message then you book a call or they book a call with them, or, you know, they book a call with you. I use cal.com to send them calendar links so that they can book a call on my calendar. And then there's going to be a step to show up on the call because at least half of the people who book a call may not even show up for the call. I mean, that's in my experience. You could be luckier than me. But in my case, half the people who've booked a call don't show up for the call. And that's a sales funnel, right? Because it looks like a funnel. You have more people on the top of the funnel, then you keep narrowing down at each step of the funnel. When they do show up on a call, you have a checklist which is already ready for the discovery call. We call this the discovery call. This is the call where you're asking questions, where you're understanding they're asking questions, they're understanding about your business or your freelancing services. Once you've gone through the checklist, you are gonna make them an initial very low ticket size proposal. And typically this is a one-time proposal. So for example, if I'm doing email marketing, I would propose to do a deep dive audit, right? So the free audit is free and that's something that we do in the first discovery call itself. In the discovery call, the first five to 10 minutes, I'm just giving them value. I'm just telling them the ways that they can improve their email marketing. I'm not saying that I need to do it for you. I just tell them how they can improve so they got a lot of free value, right? And then I tell them, if you want us to deep dive, we'll actually spend one week in your email marketing tools and we'll figure out all the problems and all the leaks in your email marketing, right? 
and that costs X amount of dollars, right? So that's the initial proposal. Let's say I say it's going to be 10,000 rupees. I'm going to do a deep dive audit, right? So that's maybe 5,000 rupees. It could be very cheap. The idea is to get the foot in the door. The idea is to have them make the first payment to you, right? It could be a thousand bucks. It doesn't matter. That's the lowest ticket size offer that you have so that they can experience your service. And this is what we call the activation stage in growth marketing, right? So you may not make a lot of money from there, but you have the client pay you for something. That means they have trusted you for something, right? And then you pitch them. Once you've gone through this paid audit, you get them on another call to share your findings on the paid audit. Then you can pitch them like a high retainer. If you pitch a retainer, you have a high lifetime value. If you have to pitch a project, which I don't recommend, but if you can only work with the client one time for a project, then it's best to do a high ticket project because you're probably going to not work with this client again. The other way that you can increase the lifetime value, which is how much money can you make with from this client over the next few years, let's say two years, for example, is to give them a high ticket project, but then give them a low cost maintenance of that. Right. So I have friends who run software companies and they use this all the time. I have friends who run website design agencies. They use this all the time. So they'll sell a high ticket website, but then they'll send a low ticket maintenance because that's high LTV. The important thing to think about is high LTV is more important than high ticket size, right? Because high ticket size usually is going to be a one-time thing. If you have a high ticket size on a monthly basis, then you have to have a lot of value being added to the client. So typically as a freelancer, I don't recommend falling for the high ticket trap because it's a, it's more of a salesy thing, but actually delivering value worth of that t- ticket size will usually need a team, right? So that's how I think about the sales process. Once you've done that, the next step is to measure your sales funnel. So you must have heard of this. What can be measured can be improved, can be managed, right? So if you don't measure it, you can't manage it. The reason why I'm able to confidently make a plan for the next six months for one crores is because I've measured my conversion funnel of my sales outreach multiple times, right? So I know my conversion rate of people responding to the people booking the call, to the people showing up for the call, to the people paying for the paid audit, to the people paying for a project or a retainer, right? Since I know those numbers, I can reverse engineer them based on my new targets, which is one crore for the next six months. So once you have the data, you can use that data for future goals. And this is why people who succeed will keep on succeeding because they have data from their past journey, because they've the process is in place, because they have the know-how. And that's why I wanted to make this video to actually share this entire knowledge base with you that this is exactly how people, at least in the services space, can very easily and confidently go from zero to one crore or whatever that number is in very simple steps. Because once you know that goal and you can break it down and you know your conversion rates, then you can build the funnel. You can just reinvent the funnel and plug and play that funnel for every service model. And this is what we do as part of the Growth Grad Pro membership as well. We help other people build their funnels. So if that's something that you're interested in, do visit growthgrad.in and you'll find more information about that there. There's more, a lot more in terms of skills that you can learn there. And on this channel, what I'm, what I really want to do is show you everything. I want you to be, I want to be really transparent with you because when you look at these portfolios that I share, you also have to understand how I made that money because only when you make that money, and I repeat this in every video, the first crore is the most important. You want to make your first crore as soon as possible because after that, You'll just find everything happening for you, right? So that's my wish and hope for you. Um, And may you have a lot of success in whichever journey you're on. This is my plan. And I'll keep you posted how I am doing on this goal for the next six months. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.